what we're seeing now on video with these supposed confrontations between Republicans and Democrats in Congress as this FBI agent is being interviewed, it is to prop up this false reality that there is a, a real confrontation, that there is a real deep state against Donald Trump, that there is a real war rumbling within the halls of Congress. There are more performance actors involved in this than the average person is aware of. I can pick up on that by watching the main Republicans grill the FBI agent who is uh, smirking, who is playing into that deep state versus Donald Trump narrative. What people need to understand about CNN and their coverage, they're also there to discredit actual issues about racism. They're not, they could be called the Clinton News Network, but in reality, they've also served out the neocon agenda. That's why they had a reporter interviewing Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan before they targeted Afghanistan for invasion after 9-11. Yeah, that, that sure seems like a liberal, loving, immigrant, loving network. People have selective memory with CNN and what it represents. So I say, and I've been observing this for years, they want to discredit genuine concerns about racism, about injustice, about the things that are taking place around the world. They want to A, capitalize and make money off of the increased interest, but for CNN to be seen as the opposition to Donald Trump is a farce. Now, I want to take you back to 2003. Donald Trump was on TV at the same time that the WWE was on TV at the same time that bombs were dropping. Now, think about that. And those weren't exactly good economic times, especially in a city like Portland. And uh, I remember turning the actual dial on the old school analog TV at the time. And I was going through a lot of stuff in my own life a few years before I started doing the, uh, the TV show. And so I was going through one reality, one phase of my life to another. And the war erupting was, was what was taking place on the timeline in the world. As, as the WWE went with the tagline, Raw is War. And I just started to notice just early programming within uh, what was on television and this connection between the dark tone that the, the WWE had taken as the war began. As Donald Trump is saying, you're fired. And, and we're getting that dose of reality TV. So I don't think that it was an accident that Donald Trump was on TV. Uh, that he's had the close relationship with the WWE going back to the 1980s, to the foundation of WrestleMania, which is its own conversation. But it's not just about politics looking like the WWE, which a lot of you see. There's an actual real relationship between Donald Trump and the actual real WWE, which is even more bizarre, but it's also in plain sight. So the conspiracy has been in plain sight. And as I said in last night's podcast, there's so many different and they're using the word conspiracy on CNN, you know, on the mainstream media. Yet for years, how many of us, how long have I been demonized for being a quote-unquote conspiracy theorist? But they bring it out and open when they want to direct it. So what CNN is doing is a number of things. I just want to be clear. A lot of people haven't thought about this. They want to co-op genuine concerns and then discredit those concerns and kind of redirect it the way they want to take it. Now, they'll be partisan base when it works for them. I wouldn't assume that it's always going to be just swing and straight Democrat. Like we've seen their connection with Bush before. And a lot of people forget. They remember what they want to remember. So let's, let's reel this back to you're seeing, even in the YouTube trending section, they want us focused on this because this is what comes before a war with Russia. There's a lot of distortion that you're hearing, especially from uh, right-wing speakers like Alex Jones, that if people you know, see beyond Donald Trump that they personally want war with Russia. No, it's the agenda of the new world order to manufacture a war amongst the people. They already have control over Russia. It is a farce to say that is not the case. That's pure BS. And some people are going to be lost forever, so don't even bother. It's common sense. We don't have Maverick, 
uh, wild card superhero type characters in the world acting as presidents at this time. Okay, all that came from propaganda. All the Putin memes of the superhero thing and the dynamic, the people's, all that is manufactured. He's a part of the same syndicate. And when this really crystallized for me, it was because of waking up to 9-11. You can't keep something like that or the truth about something like that while you just go into deep debt and then devastate the entire Middle East while what Russia and China stand by. They would have to be in on that. Or at least, and people have speculated on the other end, right, of, of the theorizing within geopolitics that they have been funding uh, elements of, of radical Islam themselves to use them as a wedge against the West. There's actually a book called Unconventional Warfare uh, that China penned, and it talked about using some of these different assets, including making a reference to Osama bin Laden as a wedge against the West. There's, there's a reference to this in a book uh, that was published in the late 90s or early 2000s. Now we can see in, in many, many ways in which all the money that has been spent chasing these... Um, radicals around the world and destabilizing the damage that it's done to the U.S. economy, to the U.S. image, right? So the question, the question is, cue bono, who benefits? Who benefits from this weakened uh, U.S. empire, if you will? And it is an empire. But the things that we are doing, even though it seems pro-empire, right? There's a lot of things that are almost counterintuitive. You know, and Donald Trump got a lot of people's... Uh, it's like, hey, we got all these wars. Why don't we just go get the oil? We're not even get the oil. We've got to have something to show for it. That's you like the common man's thinking, yeah, we don't have nothing to show for it. But it goes so much more deeper than that. I mean, so he and others, including Obama, use common language for the common man and woman. And because people like what they hear, and that, that sounds genuine. Wow, we've been waiting for this to come along. Why are there people that think that this is just the natural order of things? That we just hope and pray that someone comes along and maybe we just end up with good luck. And we have a, a, a daddy billionaire type who's going to do good for us. Like Donald Trump, he's the billionaire outsider. Yeah, I mean, hey, I like that thinking. Let's go chain smoke, drink free cheap coffee and go to the casino. Yeah. Well, I'll listen to the sharp dressed man for the uh, 595th time. Um, but it's just all this nostalgia. And Donald Trump, just like an 80s nostalgia, there, there's elements of the style, the mannerisms, that kind of brings a lot of stuff together in a way that America's never had like a pop culture type really. Uh, Ronald Reagan doesn't count. I guess he was an actor. Uh, there, there were others that may have been involved in acting. Uh, but there's never been like a character like Donald Trump that speaks to, um, sadly, right, but a certain demographic of people that associate with his personality and the way that he treats people. There are some people that can be caught in to a certain degree were brought in by the idea of, of Christian conservatism and they got to be loyal to that like all the way. How Christian is he really? Right? So people can be pulled in to a certain point, right? But in the end, he doesn't really represent Christianity at all. And go ahead and go, we have to do something about these Christians that are being persecuted. It's all propaganda. Just get the get the hive, get the tribe, get the herd behind this this idea. Let's reel it back. We have a guy making funny faces, this this FBI agent. He's there in a way as an actor, a performance actor, to reinforce the narrative, false narrative. There's a deep state waging a war against Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a, is a willful actor. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing when he steps in front of the queen. He knows what he's doing when he insults Europe. He knows what he's doing when he says something and then his followers do exactly what he does. Same thing with Alex Jones. Just point and... Um, And the masses follow. And they're getting practice doing this. It's, it's a reign of terror. And the left can, uh, can engage in their own reign of terror as they, as they point their finger at, uh, you know, and who knows who is really even behind that list of 200 supposed fake Russian websites. Because they targeted innocent people that weren't pushing Russian propaganda. So all this stuff's been allowed by our own intelligence agencies. People just still aren't asking the big questions. They were involved or were allowed. They were at least complicit. There's no investigations. They're not going to investigate themselves. So our intelligence agencies within the United States would have to be a part of something going on from Russia. 
or Facebook with U.S. intelligence because they were already working together. So how can Russia just come in without them knowing? You know, if you want to recommend another speaker on YouTube, especially if they're, you know, reaching a lot of people on top of it, but people that are seeing through this left-right paradigm, feel free to let me know. It sure seems there's a pattern here. Are you noticing a pattern here? Are you noticing a pattern of the people that don't get behind the left-right paradigm end up with uh, only so many subscribers or only so many hundreds of views? It's just an observation because there's other great content. Uh, I've referenced uh, channels recently also, people that I've come across, and I've seen how much they've struggled just to get 10 subscribers. And I can see how some people just throw their hands up in the air and just go, what's the point, right? But I've already been doing this. 12 years, moving into 13 years now. There's, there's no turning back for me. Once you start walking down a particular road where someone can Google you and, and look at what you actually say on YouTube and consider that mentally ill, there's no going back. I may work once in a while in a fast food joint during a really tough, difficult uh, month on YouTube, but the more I do that, the more appalled I am at how affected people are in a negative way by this world, how apathetic they are. And ultimately, in the real so-called world, right, not on the internet, nobody talks about any of this stuff. There is more of a, a, an aversion to talking with absolute strangers about the truth and just sharing one's light, one's humanity, than I've ever seen before. 